Hello, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister at the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I'd like to welcome all of you to the evening services for Sunday, December the 19th. We will be singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, we'll sing a few songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper. And I will have a message for you that hopefully will be beneficial and enlightening to you, uh, perhaps as enlightening as it was for you, as it was for me in preparing it. So if you would take your song books and turn them to song number 1017. One thousand seventeen. Away in the manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky. And stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. And uh, number 432. 432. How shall the young secure their hearts and guard their lives from sin. Thy word, the choicest rules, imparts to keep the conscience clean. To keep the conscience clean. To keep the conscience clean. Tis like the sun, a heavenly light that guides us all the day. And through the dangers of the night, a lamp to lead our way. A lamp to lead our way. A lamp to lead our way. Thy word is everlasting truth. How pure is every page. That holy book shall guard our youth. And well support and our age. And well support our age. And well support our age. And before the Lord's Supper, number 705. Seven oh five. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord, a common. 
and strength when we're weary a common hope for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word a common love for each other a common gift to the Savior, a common bond, holding us to the Lord. A common strength, when we're weary, a common hope, for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's Word. When we worship together, there are several things that we are commanded to do. Probably the highlight of our services uh, is that part of the service that remembers uh, the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. And we are specifically noted in Acts, the 20th chapter and the seventh verse about gathering together on the first day of the week and breaking bread. And that breaking of bread, uh, I believe, is meant to be the observance of the Lord's Supper. Uh, Jesus instituted it on the last Passover that he spent with his disciples and what we call the Last Supper. And it was reiterated by the Apostle Paul in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians that Jesus took bread and he took the cup and he gave thanks for both of them. He uh, told us in essence uh, and through uh, Jesus himself and through the Apostle Paul that this was a, such an important uh, memorial that we should uh, hold close to our hearts. And so as we partake the bread and we partake the fruit of the vine, we're remembering the body and the blood of our Savior who Jesus sent to, who God sent to the earth. Let's pray for the bread. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that this was all part of your plan. And we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to leave his home in heaven and come down to earth in human form. Uh, we're so grateful that he was willing to give up his body as a sacrifice for our sins. Bless us as we take of the bread, the symbol uh, that represents his body that was broken for us. Help us to do this in remembrance of him. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. At this time, we remember the life-giving blood that flowed from Jesus' body as he hung on that cruel cross. The blood that has come to our understanding uh, uh, as the blood that washes away our sins. Bless us as we partake. Help us to understand this awesome sacrifice that Jesus made in the shedding of his blood and that our sins can indeed be forgiven. We ask this in his most holy name, amen. The Lord's Supper has been completed, but uh, as a matter of convenience, we think of uh, this time that is commanded for us in the second, uh, in second Corinthians chapter nine, of giving back, of uh, this time that we have laid by in store to return to the Lord that which is His. We just pray that the uh, people that use the monies within our church will use it in such a way that uh, we can uh, be benevolent Christians and we can be evangelistic Christians. Let's pray for the offering. We thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, that we are able and willing to give. Help us that we would purpose each week, that we would purpose maybe each month or each year as to how much we are going to give, that uh, it would be a, 
a part of us uh, that would be sacrificial, that uh, as Jesus sacrificed himself, so do we sacrifice ourselves monetarily to give back to you so that the word may be spread and uh, people may be helped. Bless us in our giving. Help us to indeed be cheerful givers as the scriptures tell us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And if you would turn your books to number 23, the last song that we'll sing before the lesson is number 23. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted in skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From dust our God created man, he is our God, the great I am. There was a long, long time ago, a God whose voice the prophets heard. He is the God that we should know, <coughs> who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live and we survive. From dust our God, created man. He is our God, the great I am. Secure is life from mortal mind. God holds the germ within his hand. No man may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. From dust our God, created man. He is our God. The great I am, our God, whose son upon a tree, a life was willing there to give, that he from sin might set man free, and evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive. In him we live and we survive. From dust our God, created man. He is our God, the great I am. Thank you. I hope you sang along with us and that the Lord was praised through our singing. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that the title of the lesson was From Manger to the Cross. From the Manger to the Cross. It was somewhere in the fourth century that it was deemed that December 25th would be the day that we would celebrate uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. In other words, uh, this uh, is not uh, marked on some calendar in our Bibles. Uh, uh, however, uh, when it comes to seasons, it's probably the one within the Christian faith that is celebrated the most lavishly. It is that uh, Christmas time that uh, we think of giving gifts and accepting gifts. We think of, of secular things like Christmas trees uh, and, uh, and stars and ornaments on the Christmas trees. All of that being said, 
uh, let's not minimize that Jesus sent his son to earth and there was, there was a babe and he did lay in a manger. And so this is the time of the year when we drive through the neighborhoods and we see the nativity scenes, what uh, is commonly called the creche. Uh, it is the baby Jesus laying in the manger. Very often Joseph and Mary are there. Very often we see uh, sheep. Uh, sometimes we see the shepherd. And sometimes in more elaborate creches, we also see uh, the three wise men that uh, visited. Uh, Jesus lying in the manger was the beginning of a fantastic journey that Jesus made on our behalf. And although God does not make a demand to us as we are to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus each week when we partake of the Lord's Supper, uh, although uh, he does not demand that we remember and we actually celebrate Jesus' birth, we just need to know this. In order for Jesus to do what he set about to accomplish, and moreover, what God had set apart to accomplish as an adult, he had to come into the earth. And it had to be understood that Jesus was the son of God, not the son of Joseph. That the birth, although natural as births go, uh, was uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit and it was the Holy Spirit that impregnated Mary. And so when we look at uh, Jesus's own words in John chapter four, verse 34, it says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. And so um, uh, some terminologies that we use when we think of Jesus taking on the flesh uh, we call that the incarnation. He had to become in all respects, in every facet of humankind, he had to become a human being to fully qualify as uh, the perfect mediator. This is what uh, the Hebrew writer explains to us in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, it says, There is one God and there is one mediator, and Jesus Christ is that mediator. You know, uh, before Jesus, literally thousands and thousands of animals had been offered for sin for centuries. And the, the bottom line of all of that is that those animal sacrifices did not pay the debt. All right? It was part of God's plan that Jesus would pay the debt. And the importance is not that Jesus was in a manger, but that he came in human form so that he could understand the struggles, that he could understand what human beings go through. And so it is with this, that at this time of the year, thought of the birth <clears throat> of Jesus <clears throat> is all around us. Now we see those bumper stickers and those signs that say, keep Christ in Christmas. And, you know, I get that. It is important to understand that the center of this holiday that we celebrate on December the 25th is the birth of Jesus Christ. Interestingly enough, from Jesus' birth until he was 12, year, 12 years old is a blank space in our Bible. And so what we find in John uh, chapter 2, verse 43, is when Mary and Joseph went to the temple, and Jesus was a 12-year-old. And at this age, we finally have the Holy Spirit recording for us uh, some things about Jesus at the tender age of 12. Uh, uh, Jesus was left behind by mistake. 
I can remember a couple of times uh, when I was young, maybe seven, eight, nine years old, uh, playing after church with some of my friends that I looked around and uh, my mother was gone. <laughs> I guess I wasn't too important, but <laughs> she did leave me behind a time or two. Jesus was left behind. And after a three-day search, uh, his parents thought that surely he must be out among the relatives and they didn't find him. They returned to Jerusalem and they found him in the temple. And in Luke chapter 2, verses 46 and 47, we find some amazing things that happened. It says, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Now, his parents, as parents, were more uh, in tune with Jesus's well-being and uh they kind of, uh, well, no, not in, in words themselves, they explained their concern for him and about his whereabouts. And he said, and this is where we get the first inkling that Jesus knew who he was. In Luke chapter 2, verse 49, he said, did you not know that I had to be about my father's house? Or I had to be in my father's house? He, he knew then uh, he may have known before, but this is the first time that it's recorded for us. When as a child, he came to know his God sent mission. Now we're not told, but at age 12 was when he knew who his father really was and why he came to earth. And so we've looked at the babe in the manger. We've looked at the boy in the temple Third, uh, let's look at the servant of God and man. Now, the prophet Isaiah spent several chapters talking about the coming of Christ, and he referred to him as God's servant. As a matter of fact, in Isaiah 42, verse 1, it says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. Aren't those wonderful words? I love to read the messianic prophecies, uh, the wonderful uh, a message in Isaiah that his name would be called Emmanuel and that he would be great and, and wonderful. Uh, but uh, these are things that are, are very, very, very important to us. If they weren't important to us, God would not have seen that the prophets would have predicted this for us to the point where they predicted that he would be born in Bethlehem. Several years after Jesus ascended back into heaven in the book of Acts, as a matter of fact, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, Peter said this, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And so we have Jesus the baby, Jesus the boy, and then Peter in Acts chapter 10 talking about Jesus the servant. Paul spoke, uh, spoke of him also as uh, coming uh, to earth in servant terms. Speaking of Christ's existence before he came to earth, Paul said in Philippians chapter 2 verse 7, he emptied himself taking the form of a bondservant. When we have to remember that Jesus was in heaven. Jesus with, with, was with God the Father. This was a step down for Jesus to come in human form. But it had to happen that way as a part of God's plan that we understand that he experienced all that we experience. And so he emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. 
the last thing that we want to talk about, because the title of the lesson is From the Manger to the Cross, is the cross itself. All the events in Jesus' life to somewhere in the early 30s, I guess, uh, was his age. From baby to age 12, to uh, starting to perform miracles and going about in Galilee and preaching the word. All the events in the life of Christ on earth would have been for nothing if the last step had not been taken. His death as a sacrifice for our sin, his death on the cruel cross of Calvary. He had to come as a baby. He had to come into the world as human beings come into the world. He had to come into the world so that he would have a body, so that he could sacrifice that body to offer as a sacrifice. And what we do remember is all the bulls, all the goats never paid the debt that Jesus paid when he sacrificed himself on the cross. And, you know, we understand uh, Jesus uh, as a human did not look forward to this death on the cross. But for the benefits it would bring, Here's how the Hebrew writer explained it in Hebrews 12, verse 2. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hmm. This was Jesus' lot in life, to live to serve, to heal, to preach, but finally to make the ultimate sacrifice. It is only through that sacrifice that you and I hope to have the same resurrection from death that Jesus had when he rose from the dead on the third day. Through his sacrifice, Jesus did uh, one very, very important thing. He reconciled humans to each other and to God. That's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16 says. It's why we have a church, God's kingdom here on earth. We have a church where those that believe in the Lord can come together and help one another, and encourage one another, and lift one another up. The Hebrew writer said it so eloquently in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Uh, we remember 25 as saying, let's not forsake the assembly. But verse 24, that says, let us encourage one another in doing good. Let us love and encourage one another. That's our job here on earth, that horizontal relationship. So part of what Jesus did uh, reconciled humans to each other because we have the same focal point. All of us want to live with the Lord forever and ever in heaven. And with that in mind, the benefits are described by Paul in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20, where Paul says, through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. This is what Jesus did. This was the finality. That's why this lesson is entitled, The Manger to the Cross from the beginning of Jesus' life, as humble as it was, to the end. His sacrifice for each one of us. And so, real quickly, understand 
that the babe in the manger is important. It was predicted that Jesus would have a lowly birth, uh, plays into the humility that Jesus showed all of his life. That at the age of 12, when he was in the temple, he came to the understanding that his father was not Joseph, that his father was the father God. And he said that the father wanted him to be in the temple, that he had to be about his father's business. And then we look at Jesus grown into a man and become a servant, a servant of man and a servant of God. And finally, we have Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, from manger to cross. That sacrifice had to be made, and all the events here on earth led to Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, his death as a sacrifice for sin on the cross. And so as we conclude this lesson, even though God does not anywhere in the Bible demand that we honor the day Christ was born, God's ultimate purpose could not have been fulfilled had deity not come in the flesh. So it's important that Jesus came in the flesh. And the story is indeed a wonderful story. It began in a lowly manger. But the ultimate will of God was not fulfilled until the babe in the manger died on the cross. Are we uh, content to only honor Jesus as a baby in a manger? Or are we going to be truly obedient to the Son of God on the cross? You see, life begins for us when we recognize that Jesus came to earth to give up his life and sacrifice it for each one of us. And so when we, are, when we accept Jesus through our confession and repentance, we are buried with him in baptism. We die to our sins like Jesus died on the cross. We are raised to a newness of life as Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And so your invitation is wrapped up in this. If you haven't started your walk, we invite you this evening to do that, to come into Jesus Christ through the sacrifice that he made. Yes, it's the time of the year that we remember Jesus in the manger. But our life truly starts when we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. If you need to come to the Lord and uh, be baptized to the remission of your sins, please get in touch with one of us so that we can come to your help. I thank you that uh, you were with us this evening. Uh, let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that uh, we have your word that uh, tells us all of these wonderful things that we talked about this evening. Uh, from the birth of Jesus to his 12-year-old uh, time, to his life on earth as a servant to both man and God, and finally his death on the cross. Bless us as we just uh, joy, we're, are so joyful and we rejoice in the life of Jesus, our Savior. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, and help us to always remember uh, that you love us so much, that you loved us enough to send your only begotten son, and that son was willing to give his life up for each one of us. Continue to bless us, continue to be with us. We also pray, dear Heavenly Father, for all those that have, have asked for our prayers. Uh, help all of us to go to our bulletins, or our website, and our Facebook page to, to find out who they are so that we can be the prayerful servants that we should be. Continue to be with us through the evening. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all.